Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the fourth event of Gala Chorus's Rise Up virtual series. Today, we're celebrating the 25th anniversary of Naked Man. I'm Dwight Joyner, the Director of Development and Engagement for Gala Courses. To the side of the video, you'll notice an event chat. Please feel free to participate and share your memories. Above the chat, you'll find a tip jar. If something you see today moves you or reminds you of why you love Gala Choruses, show your love with your support. Before we watch the performance of Naked Man, I'm going to be chatting with three fine members of the Gala Choruses movement. With us is Dr. Stan Hill, former artistic director of both the San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus and the Twin Cities Gay Men's Chorus, and currently the artistic director of Modern Men here in Palm Springs. Bob Seeley, arranger and composer of music for the Gala Choruses movement and composer of Naked Man. And Clint Johnson, a 40-year member of the Gala Choruses family, including GMCLA, and for 33 years, I think it is, a singing member of the San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you today. Thank you. Stan, take us back to 1995 or 1996. This was a serious undertaking for SFGMC. Can you describe how Naked Man emerged? Well, it emerged from my seeing Turtle Creek in Los Angeles do Hidden Legacies and One We No Longer Touch. I decided I needed to do new music. We had the good fortune of having Bob Seeley in the chorus. Our signature song for San Francisco was I His Irish Blessing. Also, we had done You Are My Star, two of his absolutely not to be missed pieces. So when it came around to this and looking for a composer with a few trip ups at the beginning, I finally turned to Bob and I said, you're it. And we were blessed that he signed on and he did it. And we put Bob and Philip in the same room. There was a meeting of minds and the result was Naked Man. 16 movements of incredible power and advocacy. Clint, what was San Francisco like in 1995, 1996? What was it like living there when you moved there from Los Angeles? Um. It was different. <laughs> it was different than it is now. Um, it felt in some ways less restrained. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, there was, I think, I think there was, there was a, let's put it this way. There was a price for assimilation. You know, when, when you decide or when you become part of the mainstream or as you move closer to being part of the mainstream, um, the expectations of how you're going to comport yourself, what you're going to do, all of that um, as an individual and as a people um, change. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to lose uh, or, or put aside some aspects of your identity that made you who you were up until that moment. And the AIDS crisis kind of put us all in lockdown. And when we came out, we were not necessarily in as free spirited in the same ways as we were. So Bob, so you were a singing member of SFGMC. You've composed a number of pieces. Did you lock yourself away for three months or how did you do 16 movements? How long did it take you? And how did you work with Stan? Um, <laughs> Well, um, thanks for the question, Dwight. Uh, um, yes, I basically had to lock myself away for for three months, um, really? given yeah, given the uh, the time limit I had from start to finish to to get this get this done and do it well. It, it was an exciting time, you know. For me personally, though, um, I started writing. Uh, Nick and Man just just months after I had lost my partner um, to AIDS. So you know that <clears throat> was kind of a a, a double-edged sword in that it allowed me to express my my sadness, my joy, my hope my fears, 
you know, all those things that, that, that go along with the grieving process. But I was so fortunate to be surrounded by the, the family of my chorus that would um, just not let me slip. <laughs> Particularly Stan, who every Friday, he would come by my house. Robert, <laughs> what have you got for me now? <laughs> I, I, I don't know how we pulled it off, but we did. And... Um, you know, the, the chorus worked so hard and Stan worked so hard and he was so patient. And, um, you know, I just, I just put every bit of experience into this work, you know, whether it life experience, musical experience, um, every emotion that, you know, these lyrics evoked, um, were just full throttle, um, you know, so throughout the work. And that's, mm. it, it kind of wrote itself. Clint, what was it like learning this music and what did it do for you personally and emotionally? Yeah, you know, it was, it was very exciting. Um, it was liberating and cathartic. You know, up until that point, a lot of the music that the choruses were performing was really interpretations of the music that was out there. Um, this really was the beginning or we were at the beginning of really being able to tell our stories differently. They were coming from a more personal perspective. We were sharing our inner lives, you know, sharing with the audience, not only what it felt like to be us, but what the world looked like and felt like to us in a way that was less restrained and less concerned about how comfortable they were with what they were going to hear. It was the truth of who we were. You know, I, I'm not sure if people realize that uh, Philip's inspiration for the lyrics did come from personal interviews with the men of the chorus, which mm -hmm. is why I think, yeah. um, Clint, what you're saying, you know, resonates so well mm -hmm. with the men of the chorus because they, they found themselves somewhere within, you know, somewhere in the work. It's like, oh, that's me, or that's my friend, or, you know, that was my experience. The beauty about Naked Man, and I'll say this, but hoping not to embarrass him, the beauty about all of Bob's famous works is the ending always blows you away because mm -hmm. the order of the movements of Naked Man progress because after the absolute agony of Dance on Your Grave, it moves into Marry Us, the beautiful solo, We're Not Lost, We're Here, an affirmation piece. It goes into the spirituality of my church. And finally, never ever saying, take each moment as a gift. It, it, it speaks to our collective wisdom. You know, what, ha what have we learned throughout this journey that we have had as a community and as a people, um, the resilience that we've had to display, the ingenuity, the compassion, um, all of those things are spoken to. And I think, you know, like I think of never ever, and I think um, the understanding that the, mo the only moment where promise is the one we have in front of us is something that I think as, as, as someone who went through the whole AIDS you know, epidemic, um, that point was driven home very, 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 very solidly. Um, that piece really, really does resonate because um, it, it kind of mimics our past where we, we did not have the luxury of being able to have moments of joy in public, so forth and so on. They were stolen and could be so, you know, stolen moments and could be so quickly snatched away. And then we have the AIDS epidemic where the people you love, the joy that you shared was so quickly snatched away. We understand what it means that this moment is the one you have to make something of. Not tomorrow, not obsessing too much about the past, but the one you have in front of us. Who are you going to be? What are you going to do? And what are you going to do with and for the people around you? I don't want to embarrass Dr. Hill, but I believe that never ever was Stan's story that he shared with Philip. And I think that's why it was so powerful um, because 
um, you know, Stan lives his truth. And, you know, that was, that was his story. And what, what an honor that it was the last piece of the, of the work, because it, it did ring so true to all of us. So Stan, I hope I didn't embarrass you, but I, I think that's the story. Stan, that just brought 10,000 singers closer to you. Well, I don't think many of us didn't know that. And I've known yeah, you for 25 yeah. years. No, I didn't, I didn't know that. Yep. Wow. I think also what needs to be said here is GALA as an organization's promotion of new music. GALA did not have to have a full orchestra and rent a hall for the 20th anniversary performance, but they did. It was a major expense, but I looked at it as an investment in the soul of the organization to take things that so moved us and share it with everybody. There were thousands of people in that audience. They saw the whole thing, all 16 movements. And thanks to Robin and Jane and Dwight and everybody involved in GALA for saying, yes, this needs to happen. It wasn't just about me. I think everybody sees how important this is to everyone who ever comes in contact with the piece. Mm -hmm. Naked Man is a series of mountaintop experiences. Um, the performance itself, but the one that stands out in my mind as one of those mountaintop experiences, we were at Skywalker Ranch the piece is, we're not lost, we're here. And Cecil O'Neill Johnson steps up to the microphone. I don't know if I could get through this. I had not heard his solo. He and Bob had worked on his solo. And when he sang that, we did it in one take. When he sang that high note and held it forever, mm. I was a mess. <laughs> It's not that you remember everything about the piece. And to paraphrase Tim Selig, it's how you feel when you've heard it. It told, it told the story of a large part of me. You know, my, my blackness and my gayness can never be separated. But as a member of a my, of, of a minority community within the gay community. There are occasions when my gayness is spoken to, but the blackness is, is ignored or treated as some sort of exotic fetish thing. Um, and when, when that occurs, you kind of have to, to get what you need done, you kind of have to leave you know, your blackness to the side, put it in a place where it's not going to get in the way of getting the gay stuff done. Um, so I, what I would like to see uh, or what I would see um, in a piece now would be more connection between the various aspects of our personalities and the intersectionality that crosses all of that, but still plays into my sense of self as a gay man. I hope um, the, the Gala movement and the choruses, and now you know the San Francisco chorus is working on it, but everybody will begin to do is really think about how we created the space for ourselves as gay men. And think about the women in our community, the trans people, the non-binary people, the other marginalized communities um, or members of our community and make room in, uh, in the space that we have created for ourselves as gay men so that they too can enjoy the light, the air, um, the, the horizon that we can now see for ourselves. You know, we've created that space, we know how to do it. Um, I would like to make sure that we do that for everybody in our community. Stan, Bob, Clint, thank you. Thank All right, you. so we're going to watch My Naked Man. And then afterwards, after the show, folks, stay on, because we're going to do a live Q&A. And you'll be able to ask questions of our guests here. And I'll be posing them to uh, them as I read them off the screen. So without that, anything else to say, fellas? Hope all you all out there are well and and hopefully we get our lives back to normal very, very soon. And Amen. thank you for listening.
Thank you so much for listening. Please take a moment to ensure that your mobile device is in silent mode. Also take a moment to locate your nearest emergency exit. Please refrain from any flash photography. And if you do take photos, make sure you post them and tag Gala Forest in this. Twenty years ago, this month, in an incredibly steamy Tampa, Florida, <laughs> Naked Man was premiered. But it was inspired in this city. I heard incredible performances. John Bailey's Gaiman's Chorus of Los Angeles did Hidden Legacies. <laughs> Tim Seeley's incredible Turtle Creek Chorale did When We No Longer Touch. <laughs> From that moment, I knew that Gala was for new music. And I felt that every gala that I was involved in would bring new music. But what an inspiration to see all blossoming of new music at Gala. This is, <clears throat> it's a treasure trove of new ideas, new concepts. But 20 years ago, Naked Man sang about Marry Me, 20 years ago. Mm. 
This is the wobbliest damn podium I've ever been at. <clears throat> 20 years ago, Naked Man talks about transgender issues. And personally, for me, 20 years ago, it captured the idea that never, ever will this exact audience, this exact orchestra, and most importantly, these beautiful men come together in this exact configuration to sing this particular song. So we take this moment and we cherish it. Personally, I want to thank Robin, Godfrey, and Jane Ramsayer Miller, and the entire board of Gala for letting this happen. I would ask that you hold your applause until the end, and I'll tell you, it's gonna to be tough. But I want you to see the work as a whole. It's rarely done, all 16 movements. Hold your applause until the very end. Naked man.
Mrs. Nash did the laundry for the 7th Cavalry. She was big and strong and she got along 10 years out at Fort Meade. She had more than one husband, more than one husband at a time. No one thought it was a crime. They called her Tumbleweed And the girl I left behind me They called her Tumbleweed And the girl I left behind me
The corporal lifted her veil All night he was under Under her spell Then he kissed her in the morning And rode off to the Black Hills And Mrs. Nash just ups and dies Them that laid her out Took a big surprise I bet you guess by now She was more cruel than cow Dishonorable discharge. You know what that is? You know what a record feels like? A stockade? You even want to know? You round it up and raids at bars and private parties. Raided in the ride. Arrested in a men's room. Parking lot, at a beach, a parking lot. Yeah, that. A blinding flashlight in your eyes, scrambling to find your pants. <laughs> you better not go back home to Boise with the good old boys who want to keep their eye on you. <laughs> this honorable discharge. Yeah. You're discharging your pants! That's an old joke. It's an old story. And it's true. Can I buy you a drink? You don't have to choose in this and again. And he has the army.
fun old bum. You know, nowadays, I hear it takes a, a million dollars to make sure you don't end up like this. So what do you say, pal? Have you got a million dollars? Sure you do! I think he's beautiful the way he is right now down to the bone 
the cheekbones sharp, fresh crew cut leather. Tell me who you are right now. Now is good.
Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Q&A live chat. Uh, <laughs> it's quite a show. And the, uh, before we get into some questions that any of you or all of you may have for our guests, Bob, Stan, and Clint, uh, I want to clarify something. If you contributed to the tip jar over during the show, that is going directly to gala choruses. Somehow our hosting agent made an error. And as much as we love everyone at San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus, your tip is coming to gala choruses. All right, so I'm gonna start off with some questions and I'm gonna follow the chat here as well. Uh, fellas, what do you hope? And this is open to everyone and all of, all three of you. What do you hope people take away from the experience of watching this work on its 25th anniversary? Stan? Well, I hope that it inspires new works. I think that um, we're seeing more and more brand new commissions and new works and I think that's one of the most important things this movement has to offer the community at large. New music, new expression, new ways of expressing our lives and the way that uh, we live. And if Naked Man was one of the progenitors of that movement, then great. I hope it continues, and I'm seeing it continue with all kinds of new commissions coming out. Well, you've got, I'm going to, that's a segue actually, I'm going to jump on, I'm glad you said something. You're working on a new commission right now and with Bob Seeley. Well, we had no one else to pick, so we picked Bob <laughs> Seeley. Um, actually, there was, no, there was no doubt in my mind, I wanted Bob Seeley we gathered the chorus. The piece is called uh, Momentum. We gathered the chorus, asked them, what do you want to say? And we came out with this momentum, which talks about projecting into the future, having come from a place and going to another place. We had our first rehearsal last Monday, and we were expecting 25 to 30, and we had 60. So things are happening, and we're very excited. Bob was there, the sound was good, and we're thrilled. That's exciting, Bob. It has to be pretty exciting to be continuing to compose and write some new, er, right. compose some new music. And right, and and what is so special to me, and um, you know, I, my hat is off to to uh, Stan in this regard, but the lyrics um, to the piece are um, inspired posthumously um, from poems by Robert Espindola. From Robert. My partner who passed away um, five years ago now. What a um, gift to still be yeah. creating music with your partner. Exactly, yeah. He's, he's still my creative rock. <laughs> And so I really, I really, um, uh, you know, found that to be such an amazing tribute to Robert. And I can't thank Stan enough to, to want to um, yeah. use those un, uh, unused songs that he wrote. Is it, uh, how long is the piece? 30 minutes, 45 minutes? It's, uh, it's, it's 40 minutes long. Okay. Uh, just to jump on what Bob said, it was not easy. Uh, Bob came over with boxes of <laughs> poetry and writings and literature and everything. And the chorus had to go through every single one of them. We had a committee going through everything and we matched what the chorus wanted to say with what Robert said. And it was a match made in heaven because I think you're gonna find this is a profoundly incredible work. Yeah, it's, it's very joyous. It's very Yay. Joyous. Say, I've got something here from uh, Todd Paul. Hey, Todd Paul. Todd Paul from the Gay Men's Chorus of Washington, DC. Gala Festival in Tampa mm -hmm. was my first festival. I wanna thank Stan and Bob 
specifically for producing this work that made me stay in GMCW way, way longer than ever I thought I would as a young, young man at 30. As our director says, every time you sing, someone needs to hear you. I was that person in the gala audience in Tampa. I needed this piece and I needed every time I'm lucky to perform. Thank you, Stan and Bob, for this incredible gift. Oh, lovely. Okay, so Todd Paul, you're about to, you're making this guy in Palm Springs sort of <laughs> choke up here. So that's it. And, uh, and I also, I want to apologize for the final piece getting cut off. There was evidently a technical issue. So uh, I very much apologize for that. And however, the nice part about all of this is you can log back in and watch the whole thing again on June 22nd or June 24th. So, and see us again, right, fellas? So the encores are free. All right, I'm looking for some questions. They're starting to pop up here, but I'm gonna ask uh, Clint, Will you answer my original question? And that is, what do you hope people take away from the experience of watching this work on its 25th anniversary? Um, I Any would thoughts? like to, yeah, I would like to see them take away, <clears throat> to me, not only a sense of history, because it does talk about, you know, in many ways, a very specific period in time that is in many ways different and now, but also see the through lines in the stories that are being told. How some of the things that were said back then were, are still being said now. Some of the ways people are experiencing the world back, you know, now is the same as it was back then. So we, you know, we never lose our connection to our past by the history telling. And we learn from though, you know, we continue to learn from those around us. I hope that people will, you know, will take that, take that uh, from, any performance that they see of it at any point in time. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Thank you, Clint. Um, okay, Joe G. Hi, Stan, Bob, and Clint. This is Joe Gregor. I hope I'm pronouncing your name Joe right, Joe. Gregory. Gregory. I know. That's what I was thinking, <laughs> Joe. <laughs> and he's saying, well, Good Joe, job. you're no stranger to our guests. <laughs> Clearly, Joe, you're pretty famous. <laughs> so watching this brings back so many memories. I remember the first song on our first rehearsal, Dance on Your Grave. Thank you. With many exclamation points following that, thank you. Great. So, thank hmm. you all. <laughs> Does that bring back some memories for you, Bob, and those first rehearsals Joe. and hearing from Joe? Well, yeah. I mean, what was so wonderful about writing a work of this magnitude for your own chorus is that whenever I would present a new movement to Stan, I could be at rehearsal to see if I needed to change notes or if I, if, you know, anything needed to be edited. And um, just to be able to feel the energy of the work um, with, with the men and how they responded um, was such, such a huge help in my writing process. So. Um, yeah, I don't, re I don't remember that Dance on Your Grave was the first one they did. Hey, uh, I, I, I guess it was. <laughs> Who's going to, who amongst us would challenge Joe? <laughs> no one. No one. He's a feisty guy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Say, I've got a question here from Cliff. Can you tell us, and Stan, perhaps this is best directed to you. Can you tell us more about the interview process which brought out the stories of Naked Man? Were, some, were there some strong stories that fell on the cutting room floor? I mean, you already had some strong stories there. I'm a very, very good boy, Mrs. I mean, there were some really challenging things there, but were there some that fell on the floor? Um, Bob knows the final number, but I... I understand that there were 44 poems submitted, 44 right. lyrics, of which we narrowed it down to 16. So mm -hmm. the obvious answer is yes, there were some that were left out. Mm -hmm. um, but that I don't think diminishes those that were kept, especially Very Good Boy, and those that were written about, uh, pushed down the stairs, were written about specific guys in the chorus. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Can you talk to me about some of those pieces? I mean, they were a very good boy was pretty unique. Mrs. Nash was probably one of the first uh, transgender uh, pieces written within our community. The Dishonorable Discharge. Those have all been some pieces that perhaps uh, weren't necessarily pretty. You know, they, they were delivering a message that uh, uh, by members of our community who were not always listened to previously or had a place mm -hmm. in our community. And what was it like putting those out there for all of us? Well, it gave us a, I think the chorus discovered slowly but surely a growing understanding of what this piece was really about and capable of mm -hmm. to bring to our audience uh, the whole thing about dishonorable discharge, the whole thing about a very good boy, the whole thing about Mrs. Nash, um, something that is not discussed in polite circles. Uh, we were there to expose the underbelly, a dragon, the dragon, the underbelly of the community. And yet as the piece evolves through the 16 movements, we come out with, I'm not lost, we're, we're not lost, we're here. And uh, the affirmation of being a community through never ever. Yeah, and I too think that, you know, given that we were from San Francisco, it was easy for us to show that, that underbelly of, of the community that maybe somewhere else in the country was not a, a real safe thing to do. Um, so I think we, we told some really important truths about who we are as a community. And, um, you know, I, I just, uh, you know, so enjoyed the variety of lyric and people. I, I mean, I knew who a lot of these people I were writing about. So to see their faces and, and know their intimate story was um, really rewarding. So, you know, nice. From a singer's perspective, it was exciting to do work that was really about us. And, I, and I'm not just talking to generalists, it was about us, people we knew. Um, and as artists, our job is to reflect the world back on itself. And what we were showing the people was what the world looked like and felt like to us. Not what we wanted the world to look like, but what it actually did. Mm -hmm. And that was very freeing in many ways. It, it was a little, a little scary. Um, I do remember some of the First rehearsals, Dance on Your Grave, um, is one that to this day still stuns me because it so beautifully captures the frenzied feeling um, and all of the, this, the stew of emotions that, was, you know, that we were experiencing at the time. And to be able to get up on stage and sh share that with people so that you know, they knew it and those who were experiencing it as well knew that somebody else knows what you're going through. Um, it, it, it's, it's why we do what we do. So it was, it's always very exciting to get to do music like that. Mm, thank you. Say, I've got a couple of questions here I want to ask. Uh, from Tim V. Over the years, have you heard interpretations of the songs in Naked Man that brought in a new spin that hadn't been considered before? Um, um, oh. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, yeah, I wanted to just say that um, what comes to mind first is um, uh, not many years ago, uh, the Portland Chorus um, The Portland Gaiman's Chorus? Portland Gaiman's Chorus had, had a performance of Naked Man in its entirety. And Bob Menzel, who um, was their director, um, he mixed up the order of movements slightly, very slightly. Um, and it worked really, really well. Um, 
you know, he, he did it with permission, <laughs> but it, it, it crafted a more clear story of, of um, the, pro the progression of, of, um, of the work. You know, uh, it was just really just a, a, a few movements he just, um, just um, altered slightly in, in where they're heard, but it, it, it gave it a whole new spin. You know, um, and I, I was very pleased at how how well crafted it was. Nice. Yeah. Nice. That, yeah. yeah. And um, they also they also um, had some dance going on. So a dance group from the from the um, from the chorus did did some. Really man, did you really incorporate nice. dance with Naked Man back in '96? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, and I was a very, it was a very conscious decision. Um, uh, you have to understand that whenever you say something, you're going to get a dichotomy of opinion. Mm -hmm. And there were people that were a little nervous about the work to begin with. And I wanted to project those words as strongly as I could. That's why all the words always appeared in the programs. And I always did all 16 movements to make sure everything was there. Um, back to your original question about other choruses and things. One of the interesting things that happened in Denver was that, number one, the number of choruses that had done uh, Naked Man absolutely blew me away. I was up on stage beforehand talking to various guys and some of their choruses had not done all 16 movements. So there were people reading from their scores the movements that they had not done with their own chorus. But I think it brought a whole new poignancy and uh, revelation, if you will, of the, of the context of the work uh, now that they were finally able to do the entire piece and see what the whole thing was about. Yeah. All right. Joseph S. is writing in. I sang Naked Man with the NYC GMC in 1997. Mm -hmm. uh, my first year Gary with the Miller. Yes. I was there. I was there. Yeah. <laughs> I hope Gary's on this evening with us. I had recently separated from my wife and children and was struggling to understand what was happening to me and who I was. Learning Naked Man was a profoundly powerful way to come to terms with my authentic life. Mm -hmm. It may have saved my life. Joseph, you are with family and we love you and we are so glad to have you be a, an important part of the Gala world and the Gala family. You know, when you hear those things, fellas. That, it's why we do what we do. Yeah. <laughs> it's why yeah. we yeah. sing. Why we sing. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. Thank you, you know, so you, much. You for never that. know. Thank you me. never know what someone will hear that will help them see themselves in a way that gives them the strength to go one more day. Yeah. You know, just, you know, I, I see you. You know, you, the world may ignore you, may be lost, but you're not. I see you, you are right there. Um, and that is, it's a powerful thing to be able to do. It's an incredible gift to be able to do. Um, and, you know, I've been in the course, I started singing with Los Angeles in 19, around 1980, I believe it was, and <clears throat> have been singing pretty much nonstop now. Uh, and one of the reasons why I, it's hard to not do it is because I've experienced those kinds of moments myself by doing the work. And I've spoken to people who have had those experiences by hearing the work. And I think the beauty of what we do is that nobody's out there trying to be you know, magical and a big star and all this. They're, it's just a bunch of people who get together and do something that they love. And we have the capacity by just being ourselves 
to have that kind of an impact on the people in the world around us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how can you, how can you walk away from something so powerful that is so simple to do in so many ways? Say, I've got a comment here from Fred B. Gaiman's Chorus, Washington, DC, performed most of Naked Man in our Scandinavian tour in Norway, Sweden, and Copenhagen. Audiences there applauded and stood just as they had in the US. The piece is universal and timeless. Oh my God. Thank you for this amazing wow. work. You did get royalties on those shows, Bob <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess I'm still waiting for those. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the check that's is in the mail. You're right. Check is yeah. in the mail. That's that's lovely. That is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. kind of speaks to what I was saying earlier about, you know, the 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 fact that people will hear it, even though it's 25 years old, and still be able to connect with the stories and recognize. Well, I mean, it's the fact that you know the movements to Naked Man, for the most part, are the human experience. Yeah. Um, and knowing that our experience here in America is no different than those in Norway or Scandinavian countries. I mean, it's, it's a universal language, you know, that we all feel and speak and sing. So um, that's lovely. Thank you for sharing that. It I, is. That's, that's... Well, fellas, I want to thank you. Thank you for giving this to all of us. Thank you for joining me and our community today. Uh, any last words that you'd like to share about Naked Man on its 25th anniversary, Stan Hill? I want to echo what Clint said. I believe it is our not only pleasure to do these kinds of works, it is our responsibility to commission them. Uh, the community has things yet unsaid that need to be spoken. And as we evolve as a community and a society, I cannot think of a better medium to express our innermost wants, desires, dreams, aspirations than through music. And I'm hoping as you see happening in choruses across the country, that new music is emerging, which allows every voice to sing. Thank you. Thank you, Stan. I don't know that any of us could add anything to that. That is why we're here. Bob Seeley, Clint Johnson, Dr. Stan Hill, thank you so much. And I'd like to thank all of you for joining us during our 2021 virtual series presented by Gala Choruses, uh, Naked Man on its 25th anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe out there and get back into the rehearsal halls. <laughs> yes? Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Stan, Bob, and Clint. Thank you. Bye.